So, this book, The Sovereign Light, A Course in Metaphysical Spirituality, describes here on page 10 some of the influence that it's had through um, several, um, s several um, historians that have written previous books and um, trailblazing theologists and channelers and the Hindu aspect of affirmations that I have hinted in the chanting that also ignite uh, from within to find that authenticity, that sovereign light, that oneness, that unity, that connection that connects all bodies and through the, the bending of the light, the depolarization, polarization from one pole to the other, magnetic, um, electrical components, okay, um, that was, also has to do with, um, founders like, um, not only Einstein, but, uh, Nikola Tesla, and before that, I also have mentioned, you know, some gurus and yoganandas, and with breathing and Kriya Yoga, and, uh, the, um, the Theosophical Societies, as well as the, the, the Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita is a book that you would find amongst, you know, the Vedic teachings, with Krishna being the advisor and counsel of the warrior king, who is always, you know, it has to do with, if you have enemies from within, obviously whatever turmoil and conflict, you will have that same resistance reflecting on the outside, meaning wars. So, the, the great king who was in conflict, and you know, they had wars back then, and it's, it's in this book, and he's all always asking for advice from the outside, seeking for this Krishna to help him and advise him, oh, what do I do now? Oh, help me find, because that peace from within um, was reaching out, like, you know, in today's world where people pray, pray to an outside, something outside of them for help, for assistance, something that's the Holy Ghost invisible, um, you know, and so that was reaching out, and this book is, is trying to help you find that from within, because whatever that king was searching from outside for guidance was actually internally finding it. So these are the paradigms and examples and influences that are in this book and the various mantras and um, are what we call in today's world affirmations. So when you remove the idol, that outside uh, worship of, let's say, deities and gods and you find that within you of your own sovereign being that spark, that authenticity then you can become united with everybody and in that field of oneness knowing that that's a reflection of you that you resonate with others so with that said these affirmations you will find triggers to help clear your energy field and thoughts throughout the day that would set off ideas for you to practice. And, you know, these affirmations have originated, the, the whole principle and ideas were 
from those mantras, you know, when we call out and we sing, which I did kind of bring it out in, in the beginning, and, you know, all these tools. So right away, you get some kind of meaning with an affirmation. It's a thought, because thoughts create beliefs, and this pattern of thinking. And so we are to remove all this meaning and recreate our own program. So it's all about breaking through the programs. Okay. And so yes, we can find power within the programs because of the collective and that empowerment that has been given to those various morphogenic fields that are created in the geometrics of those thoughts and patterns to worshiping certain deities that have those certain archetypes of certain characters that we role model and, and as such. But once we break all that or we realize, ah, maybe I like this, a little bit of that, and, and realize that everything is always changing and that perhaps, you know, we might outgrow something and something else, we never want to kind of um, restrict our souls from growth. And when we sign contracts and bind ourselves to certain agreements, and, you know, we end up, whether it be for financial gain or what have you, we end up signing that expansion that we could have otherwise to feel free to express ourselves, and we restrict it with that kind of finite principle where we sign our souls to the devil. Because, you see, what have has might have lived before or was was you know worked before might not work today because we have we're always growing and evolving we can't be expected to to worship certain deities from the past or whatever because that too is okay as long as we know where to draw the line again you see that we don't fall back into enslavement so we can take these tools and use them to ignite and wake up with and then eventually create our own, okay? So this thing about finding peace from within, so we all started out from reaching outwardly or look at all this and we're, we're, we're seeking that inner voice, that inner guidance, and we're giving it another name, something like all channelers have done in the past, uh, saying, oh, I'm channeling so-and-so or I'm channeling, you know, so many others, not just one. And then we use a mediator, like let's say Christ or Ganesh or Krishna. So, you see, once we realize that all those things are just reflections of our own creation that we're using to, to better help us as tools to, to um, you know, connect, just like we do with Wi-Fi and all these silly gadgetries that we have today. Know what they are. Know, recognize them and know where to draw the line, and know that we are masters of our own domain and creators of our world. And so that's what this book is bringing to you.